Recently, I've been replaying all the 2D Mario games for my upcoming ranking of every level. In fact, I've actually recently finished. Except Mario Land, Nintendo just released it on Switch Online. Anyway, after finishing all the games, I kind of noticed something. One important aspect for each of the games are its bosses. They almost always cap off a world and are meant to be exciting and interesting challenges. If you've played Super Mario Bros. Wonder, you know that its bosses are... not that. Pretty much the only major criticism this game receives is the fact that its bosses are pretty lame. I entirely agree with that stance, so for my playthroughs of each of these games, I was paying special attention to the boss fights to compare them to Wonder. But that's when I realized, the 2D Mario bosses have always kind of sucked. Sure, there are a lot of good ones, but for the most part, bosses in this series have really struggled to be interesting. What makes this so weird to me is that I don't feel like that's the case for the 3D games. I think all of the 3D Mario games, except maybe 3D Land, have phenomenal and memorable fights. So today, I thought it'd be fun to discuss why I think the 2D Mario series struggles so much with its boss fights. I'll be taking a close look at each game here to see what fights worked, what fights didn't, and why. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. At 200k, I'm ranking every 2D Mario level, and let's jump right into my first point. Point. Alright, the first reason I think 2D Mario bosses are so lame comes down to repetition. Obviously, if you do the same thing multiple times, it's going to gradually get less interesting. I mean, you can only burn people's houses down so many times before it gets boring. Now, I'm not just talking about repetition between games here. I don't mind Bowser almost always being the final boss. In fact, I actually think for the most part, the final boss in every game is pretty good. Bowser's just that cool. No, my main problem is that the bosses also repeat within the game itself. Taking a look at the 12 2D Mario games, you want to know how many of them don't have a boss repetition problem? <laughs> Yeah, only two of them. Of those, Mario Land barely counts because it has 12 levels. I'd be amazed if they managed to repeat bosses there. Mario Land 2 is basically the only game to never repeat bosses, so hey, good job. These other 10 though, man do they repeat quite a bit. Let's just go game by game to see what the boss composition is like. Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels only have Bowser as their boss, which I think can be partially excused since they were the first two Mario games on the NES. Actually, I lied. Bowser's evil twin brother shows up in Lost Levels. I'm not joking, that's real. Mario Bros. 2 USA gets a bit more interesting with its boss composition, having six unique bosses. Mauser, Triclide, Fry Guy, Claw Grip, Maskate, and Wart. Of these, only Mauser repeats, so composition- so composition-wise, this game is mostly good. Unless you count Birdo, they're in like every level, there's no escape. Mario 3 is sadly where things get a bit rough again. This is the first game to have the Koopalings. We'll be talking about them a lot. While they each only have one fight along with Bowser, Boom Boom was also introduced here. You have to fight him, I kid you not, 17 times. What is this dude's problem? Luckily, Mario World is better again with only the Koopalings, Resnor, Big Boo, and Bowser. Only Resnor repeats four times, which is not as bad as Mario 3. Moving on to the new Super Mario Bros. miniseries, the first game almost did really well as every castle has a unique boss. But sadly, Bowser Jr. decided to pull a boom boom, so we have to fight him 10 times, not even including his appearance in the final boss. New Super Mario Bros. Wii has us fight each Koopaling twice, Bowser Jr. three times, and Kamek and Bowser once. To be fair to Jr. this time though, his mechanics are pretty different between each fight, and we'll be looking at him a lot later. New Super Mario Bros. 2 has us fight each of the Koopalings, Bowser, Dry Bowser, and unfortunately, Resnor six times. New Super Mario Bros. U has us fight each of the Koopalings, Kamek, Asumo Bro, Bowser, Bowser Jr. three times, and making his grand return, Boom Boom, six times. How did he get cut down to nearly a third of the fights he once had, and it's still too much? And finally, we have Mario Bros. Wonder, which might just have the worst ratio of repeated bosses since the Lost Levels. You have to fight Bowser Jr. four times and Bowser once. So yeah, after looking at all these games, with the exception of Mario Land and Mario Land 2, they each repeat bosses several times. But the thing is, repetition is not necessarily a bad thing. How repetition is used is important, and I think this is probably the main downfall of these games. I mean, let's look back at the 3D Mario games. All of them also repeat bosses at least a few times. In fact, my favorite game of all time, Mario Odyssey, repeated all of its bosses at least twice for 100%, with the Brutals getting three fights each. So why do I like how Odyssey does it when compared to the 2D games? Well, that's because each of its repeat bosses are changed significantly between fights. Let's take the main man himself, Bowser, here. You first fight him in Cloud Kingdom, and you have to attack him three times to knock him down, with him only doing a tail swipe on the last one. Alternatively, in his second fight in Moon Kingdom, he does a tail swipe between every hit. His Moon Kingdom fight also has several new attacks, like shooting out fire from the center. Plus, you also get the escape sequence where you actually get to control Bowser to top it off. I was about to say how cool is that, but I already used my cool Bowser references video, I have to restrain myself. But as you can see, these two fights are very different from one another. This is the case for all the boss fights in Odyssey. The Mecha Wiggler duplicates himself, Torque Trick dispenses out more damaging rings, the Lord of Lightning's arena is slippery, and so on. Now, I know what a lot of you might be saying. The 2D fights do change between each repeat. Ah, you're totally right. Let's take a look at the groundbreaking changes Boom Boom had between repeats 
in Mario 3 to justify having 17 fights. Fight 1 is base Boom Boom. You just gotta jump on his head three times as he moves to attack you. Between each hit, he'll temporarily become invincible before attacking again. Fight 2, he's gray and blue now and sometimes does a big leap. Fight 3, after getting hit once, he grows wings, but loses them again after getting hit. Fight 4, there are two blocks in the room. Fight 5, there are three blocks in the room. <laughs> He doesn't get wings anymore. Fight six, you have to drop down into the room from above, and there are now five blocks. Fight seven, after the second hit, he zips around. Fight eight, it's the same, but he now has wings again. Fight nine, it's the same as eight, but there are now two blocks in the room again. I was worried they never return. Fight ten, same as seven, but the floor is ice blocks, and Boom Boom starts on a ledge. Fight eleven, five blocks. Fight twelve. I think it's literally just fight it again. They forgot to change it. Fight 13, three blocks. Fight 14, literally fight seven. Fight 15, literally fight eight. Fight 16, the floor is a conveyor now, which is cool, I guess. And finally, fight 17, literally fight eight, really ending on a banger there. Now, yes, that's the most egregious example in the series, but the other repeated boss fights are not that much better. Bowser Jr. and New Super Mario Bros. and Boom Boom and New Super Mario Bros. U change basically the same amount. At the same time, though, there are repeated boss fights that actually do work well. Bowser Jr.'s fights in New Super Mario Bros. Wii are all entirely different for one another, making them some of the best boss fights in the series. But that still doesn't change the fact that most of them do feel extremely samey. Heck, even though the Koopalings are each their own different character, most of their fights feel extremely similar to one another. Theoretically, if I were to describe their fights to you, you'd think they'd all sound extremely different, but in practice, they're nearly identical. The reason that is brings us right into our next point. The boss fights are just too easy. Now yes, I'm not here to say that Mario games are meant to be hard. The series has a massive audience, a lot of which being young children. So the bosses still have to be beatable for them. But that doesn't mean they have to be mindless. The main issue with the difficulty of Mario bosses is just the fact that most of the time you can attack them before they get the chance to attack back. I mean, looking at Boom Boom again here, if you just jump on him as soon as he gets out of his invincibility stage, you can instantly hit him. Sure, that requires mild timing, but it's really not hard at all. That means that most of those differences we saw before, which already weren't that major are completely pointless. This is also the main problem that plagues the Koopaling boss fights. For a vast majority of them across New Super Mario Bros. Wii, 2, and U, when you hit them, they'll go into their shell and slide around the room. You can't hit them in this stage due to the spikes, but just like Boom Boom, you can hit them again as soon as they leave it. That makes it so the Koopalings can attack back, and those attacks are what makes each of them unique. Wendy is supposed to throw out rings, Lemmy is supposed to shoot out bouncy balls, Larry is supposed to larry all over the place, but you don't get to see any of that because you can hit them too quickly. That turns most of these into the exact same fight, just with the arena slightly changing. I think this is the main reason so many people don't like the Koopalings, because the games don't do a good job of showing off what makes each of them unique. But what could they do to avoid this? Well, as I said, there are a few fights that do get around this issue, so we can take a look at them. Bowser Jr.'s new Super Mario Bros. Wii fights are great examples. While you can do a similar thing in the first fight against him, it's at least in the air this time, so it's a bit harder and feels different. The other two, though, completely avoid this issue. The second fight in Six Airship requires the player to ride in a clown car themselves to crash into his. You have to push him towards the electric walls three times without getting hit yourself. After each hit, though, he flies back toward the center, meaning you can't just combo him into the wall forever. In his third fight during 8 Airship, the only way to hit Junior is by using his own bombs. Actually, you can't jump on him, but it requires an incredibly precise glitch, so who cares? You have to ground pound at just the right time to launch the bombs back into him. Between hits, you have to wait for him to drop down more, so he's able to fill that time with other attacks of his own that you have to avoid. So what can we draw from these fights? Well, I think that's mostly pretty clear. You have to give the boss itself time to attack between getting hit. Now, those fights are quite different than what we normally see with the Koopalings. I mean, for most of these, you don't even have to jump on his head. Well, if you want an example of how these can be done better, we can actually look at Junior's fights in Mario Wonder. He does the same thing the Koopalings do. He requires three hits to defeat and slides around in his shell between hits. The difference is that sometimes when he exits his shell, he'll still be invincible and can attack the player. Now, is this a fantastic solution? Not really, since it's kind of unclear when he is and isn't invincible. But hey, at least you actually have to fight him here. I think the general idea is good here, making him be able to use his own unique attacks again before the player can hit them. I think a good way of doing this would just be to have the Koopalings go off screen or something between hits. Let's take a look back at the Mario U Koopaling fights and tweak them all so they can actually get a chance to fight back. First off for Lemmy, there is so much wrong with this fight. Why on earth is there nowhere to fall off? The whole point of his bouncy balls is so that he can knock us back and have us flying into the void. I think for the invincible problem, they can maybe have him go into a pipe off screen and then drop balls onto the floor between hits, so the player has to avoid them before getting a chance to attack Lemmy again. Morton could ground pound with his shell when he's about to get up, which would knock the player to the other side of the stage, forcing them to then avoid his pokey attacks. For Larry, okay, honestly, he's supposed to be the basic Koopaling, so they could just keep him the same. Wendy could go into a pipe in the background and drop a few icicles onto the player's head before coming back. Iggy honestly annoys me the most because his is so obvious. Just have him leave his shell while he's on the ceiling instead. Mario can't hit him while he's up there, so it'd fit perfectly into the fight. Roy could easily go into the 
the background to shoot the player with bullet bills before coming back on a moving platform. And finally, Ludwig could easily jump into the air while he's still in his shell, and then clone himself. These are all very minor tweaks, but they would make each Koopaling fight so much more engaging. On top of that, it'd make each of them feel extremely different from one another. They'd each have a new strategy instead of having the same strategy across each one. I would say this is the primary thing hurting Mario bosses at the moment, but there is one other thing that I think is important to bring up. That other important factor is, the 2D Mario bosses are not usually thematically fitting. That might seem a bit weird to say, but it's one of the main reasons the 3D Mario bosses are so memorable, while the 2D ones are much less so. This is another big reason people dislike the Koopaling so much. Not only do they not have much of anything to do with the worlds they're placed in, but they're also just not original characters anymore. They've been the primary bosses in 5 Mario games now, so a lot of people are getting tired of them. Sure, of the Mario bosses that aren't Bowser or Junior, they're probably the most iconic, but that doesn't mean they have to be the main bosses. At the same time though, I also don't necessarily think they have to go away. I think there are two games that show off perfect systems for how the Koopalings could still come back and make them more interesting. And also wonder if people miss the Koopalings because of how awful its bosses are, so it should be easy. First, I want to take a look back at our old friend Super Mario Odyssey, as I think the way its bosses are set up is perfect. There are pretty much two different camps Odyssey's bosses fall into, a villain's camp and a kingdom boss camp. The villain's camp consists of the Brutals, Madame Brood, and Bowser. None of them really have to do with the kingdoms you fight them in, but they are the main antagonists, so having them show up throughout the game is important. The kingdom boss camp includes Nuklotech, Torque Drift, the Mecha Wiggler, Kukatil, and the Lord of Lightning. The Robo Brood also kind of fits both categories. These bosses come at the end of the respective kingdom quests, and they're all very unique from one another. Unlike the villain's camp, which you have to fight twice in this story, unless you new moon skip, sorry, Madam Brood, you only fight each of these once, with their second fights unlocking as a post-game challenge. I think this system works incredibly well. It gives many kingdoms their own unique flair, but also still keeps a clear set of main villains that you're trying to take out. That's one of the reasons I think so many people love the Brutal so much. I hope they add Rango in the next Mario Kart. I think this approach should be what the 2D games are trying to go for. Believe it or not, there is one 2D game that did try this. Sadly though, they still kind of messed it up. That game is the original New Super Mario Bros. on DS. You may have noticed I sort of skimmed over it when counting the bosses for each game because I wanted to go more into detail on it here. Just like in Odyssey, there are two camps, a villain side with Bowser and Bowser Jr., which repeat throughout the game, and a world boss camp. The world bosses are almost entirely unique characters to this game, being the Mummy Pokey for World 2, Cheap Skipper for World 3, Mega Goomba for World 4, Petey Piranha for World 5, Monty Tank for World 6, and Lack of Thunder for World 7. These six bosses are some of the most unique in the entire 2D Mario series. They each have their own entirely different mechanics that makes their fights interesting. For the most part, they're also original to this game. Petey Piranha is from Mario Sunshine, but I don't mind because he's cool. Some of you may also say, well, Big Goomba is just a big Goomba, and to that I say, hop off the goat. But yeah, I love the world bosses here, and I was so excited to say this game finally had good fights. But yeah, Bowser Jr. ruins it because you have to fight him 10 times with very minimal changes. Bowser's fights are all pretty good and well varied, especially since this is the game where Mario violently melts off his skin to create Dry Bowser. But yeah, Bowser Jr. could have really used some changes here. So this is my proposed solution for boss composition. I think we can bring back the Koopalings. They could make original bosses like the Brutals, but I also don't think they have to for people to like the bosses again. Instead of throwing the Koopalings in castles though, let's keep them in each world's fortress or airship or whatever the next game uses as a world's midpoint. The Brutals were often used as bosses that came before a kingdom boss, and I think that would work well here too. I'd also make sure to keep my gameplay changes in mind from the previous sections. Then in the castles, they could make mostly unique bosses. Obviously keep Bowser as the main boss, but the rest of the world should get new and original characters that fit the world's theme. This would fix the repetition problem as each Koopling would only be fought once, it would fix the gameplay problem because you wouldn't be able to combo them, and it'd fix the originality problem with the new bosses coming in each world. In my opinion, this setup would be perfect, so I really hope it's what they go for in the next game. But now that we know what my ideal 2D Mario boss fights would be, I want to take one last look at Mario Wonder to see where in particular it went so wrong. While it does share a lot of problems with the previous games, it has its own unique problem too that I want to mention. Gameplay-wise, this is definitely an improvement since you can't really combo the bosses anymore, but from a repetition and originality standpoint, this might just be the worst game we've seen yet. As I said, there are only two characters here, Bowser Jr. and Bowser himself. That is genuinely a pathetic showing. I mean, that's just taking the new Super Mario Bros. DS villain camp, but not the world boss camp. That means Wonder has no original original characters for its boss fights, which is extremely disappointing. They do try to make up for this a little bit by making each junior fight have significant changes, but seeing the same guy at the end of each world just takes the excitement out of it. What might be an even worse crime though is the boss count. There are only five, which is the second lowest in the series behind Mario Land. Even then, Mario Land had more variety as its four bosses were all completely different characters. This boss count was especially disappointing to me because I really wanted to do a boss ranking for this game before it came out, but only having five things to rank would be extremely short and boring. 
boring. I do find it funny how some channels that upload boss fight compilations really had to stretch to make their videos longer for this game. Like, no, the Leaping Smack Roll is not a boss. This count gets even worse when you look at the game, though, because there are several places that should have gotten bosses but didn't. The airships, for example, just have you run to the end of a room and press a button, which feels super anticlimactic. What's even worse, though, is that two of the main worlds just straight up don't have bosses. Both Shining Falls and Fungi Mines just sort of end without any sort of fanfare. Doesn't help that you have to enter each of these final levels twice for some reason. Add on that Mario Wonder is so creative throughout its base stages, and you have a recipe for an extremely underwhelming selection of boss fights. Hopefully one day they'll be able to figure out this boss problem, but as of now, 2D Mario bosses sadly remain extremely disappointing. But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you think the World 5 Bowser in Super Mario Bros. is peak boss design and hate me for not mentioning it? Let me know in the comments. I know this video may have been a bit all over the place, but it was something I wanted to talk about. Now, I'm sure a lot of you may be wondering why I did this and not a ranking of the 2D bosses. Well, that's because I feel like that ranking would greatly spoil my 2D level ranking. So yes, I will do a boss fight ranking in the future, just after that video comes out. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.